Hello and welcome back. We're going to jump into the 1978 catalogue again today and have a look at, at a model that I uh, recently acquired. Somebody mentioned in the comments recently that they hoped I wasn't going to go too far forward into the Hornby Railways period. And I think uh, my collection really ends in 1980, which is the period in which I uh, lost interest as a child. But uh, there are some really interesting models in, in this uh, late 70s period, which I'm quite interested in. So if you just have a look at those on that page, they really are quite terrific. And I think this is the period that they really made the change from uh, largely making toys in the past to really making an effort to make uh, scale models, perhaps. Although the model we're going to look at today may not uh, fall into that category. I believe a large number of these were made in different liveries as the years went on, possibly up to uh, 2004 in uh, various liveries. But uh, today this is the... Um, Holden tank or the GWR 040 tank, catalogue number 077 there. So great looking thing. And I'm not sure whether this is a genuine model or a pre-production model. Again, it does look a little bit different to the, the real model. And again, some of the finish is quite crude. Now I thought I'd run this today with, with some of these coaches. Now when I had a look at uh, the Blythe and Tyne Model Railway Club, um, exhibition in their club room back in December I picked up a couple of these coaches to go along with one I already had so I think we're just going to put this catalogue down before it sort of falls apart in my hand uh, sadly the uh, the staples have gone they had gone quite some time ago I think before I'd got it uh, it sadly doesn't uh, stay together too well so we'll just grab hold of the box here now, I think this model RO77 came along in uh, 1978, that's why we've got the catalogue, new that year. And as, we, as we're going to see it today, it remained uh, like that till 1979. And then I, I believe they uh, they went to a painted version. Um, and its catalogue number changed to R333. And then there were many, many different variations and liveries with countless different catalogue numbers with far too many to mention. So we'll just have a, a look at this G GWR or Great Western uh, number 101 tank today so you can see the uh, the box has seen better days and I was quite pleased to find this I've been on the lookout for one for quite some time in good condition seen plenty of them in very poor condition but they, they were built as very sort of cheap starter models many many thousands were made for sets I think over a hundred thousand for sets and nearly 40,000 solo models so if we just uh, open up the box here so, See if we can carefully open that without uh, causing any more damage to the box. Now, sadly, no paperwork with this model, um, but uh, the model is, as, you, as you're going to see, in fairly good condition. So, just to get that out of there, can excuse that awful noise of polystyrene on cardboard. There, we'll just pop that down there. And we've got that lovely face card there, the artist's impression. We've got the, the model number there, RO77. And here, an unusual white tank locomotive built for the GWR in 1902. And I think it was originally built as an oil burning locomotive, later converted to a coal burner. I think Hornby have chosen to uh, model it as, as a as a um, as a coal burning locomotive. So we'll just pop that, that down there. We'll swiftly have a look at the model in its polystyrene there. So a fairly tidy looking thing, isn't it? There's some marking along the sides of the tank there, if you see. I don't know whether that sort of shows up some um, support or markings in, in the molding itself, but uh, the decals are stayed in, in pretty good shape. You can see there is quite a bit of detail in there. And if you look down there, there's some really very, very fine detail. I think uh, Hornby might have been uh, showing off a little bit with what they could do at this point. And there she goes, springing into life. She can run a little bit quickly, but uh, what I think is great is how smooth she is over this point work. Tiny little wheelbase, and these uh, aren't the, uh, the smoothest of points, and they've got the great big uh, dead areas for the big plastic frog on them. Charging past the engine shed there, we're gonna bring her to a stop just before points number 11 at the station. And then we'll roll her in and hook her up with a short rake of those little GWR four-wheel coaches. 
think we have those. So there we go, I have her out of the box, and we'll just have a, a swift look around. You see these handrails are just molded in, plenty of rivets running up along the side though, all the way along the tank. And then there's plenty of rivets to be had, sorry, around the around the smoke box there as well, isn't there? Nice in, nice uh, detail there. Separately fitted uh, cap on the chimney there. And this dome is just painted up. And then we've got a couple of what look like either safety valves or whistles there. And again, just looking over the top of the roof, instead of leaving that plane, they've gone to a fair amount of trouble there, haven't they? A lovely coal load put in there and some... A bit of detail there, is that sort of a, a handle for a, a brake perhaps or something? And if we have a look inside, and see if we can get the light on that. Look at all that in there. That's lovely, isn't it? Great round windows. I don't think we can see down to the floor. I'm never going to get that into light for you. I don't think there is, I don't think there is any floor detail in there, but these lovely little steps as well. See if we can get that into focus for you. Right. Great detail riveted detail along there but what I think is really super is this detail under here behind the wheels the braking detail look how fine that is so if I hold my thumb behind there you can see that detail I'm stunned that survived this amount of time I think that really is quite something you can see the motor through there so fairly simplified valve gear I have noticed that that pin does tend to pop out a little under running. Those wheels are quite interesting. They're sort of the, the black spokes are sort of dropped into a sort of a, a nickel plated type uh, type wheel there or chrome type wheel. So rather than having a steel tire on it, that plated 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 section goes all the way around the back and the, the black section's just dropped in on the front plastic drive gear there. And Hornby's name made in Great Britain. So sort of virtually all plastic, this model. So I just have a look around the front end there. Plastic buffer heads. I believe later models may have had vacuum pipes available as well. I have seen a picture with one with vacuum pipes in, in a Hornby book. So let's just get that out of shadow again for you. So it is a Fairly lovely thing, isn't it? Again, we've got detail behind the rods there, more braking detail, and fluted rods as well. Quite impressive. I think these were really were budget type models. A little bit of paintwork loss there. I'm not sure whether the paintwork may have ever, ever gone on there. Just a, a fault in in the spray spray process, perhaps. But again, lovely little thing. I'm really pleased with it. And away she goes with that short rake of GWR four-wheeled coaches. Just snap those points shut around the second radius curve. She's much easier to control the little weight behind her. Making quite a lovely sound. They are plastic wheels on these coaches. The earlier ones did have uh, silver seal wheels, but I think these date from between 82 and 2004. And we're going to bring her to a, a gentle stop just alongside the station there. Quite a smooth runner, plenty of power available. And I, I think uh, it probably runs a little bit quick for its own good. And I'm just going to pull that weight off there because it will drop straight out when we turn the model over. So we call it a weight, it really isn't, doesn't weigh very much. Um, I think that could do with being a slight, slightly bit heavier, give it a bit more grip perhaps. So we just have a look around there. So it's got that totally sealed type of motor there, we've got the, the bearing on the back of the armature there, and you can see that, I just ro rotate that around a little, you can see that run over, the coil's nice and bright and shiny, so I don't think it's done too much work here, so I don't think these motors are, are what you call very, very serviceable, 
little plastic worm there. You can see the evidence of white grease there, which I, I put on there, which has sort of splattered off to the sides. So when I tip this over, these rods will sort of jump out of there. So I'll just put my fingers on there to try and prevent that from happening. So there's virtually no weight to this whatsoever. And then we can get a better look at some of that detail we were we were talking about earlier. See if I can keep that in focus for you. And there's that uh, break in detail there as well. So I think they've really gone to town on it. And I think this method of uh, propulsion or this type of motor, they've got another couple of 040s out of this. Although the, the model numbers do escape me and they're from a little bit later on in the period. So quite an interesting thing. That's a sort of metal cradle that, that that motor sits in. So if we just pop that down and just have a, a swift look at the body shell whilst we've got it removed. So we've already had a, a good look around the outside of it. Let's have a look on the inside. You can see under the boiler there, although that's, uh, I think that fills in a bit when you've got the, the chassis inside it's sort of fairly clean it looks like there's been some heat at some point here i think if we turn that uh, over we might be able to read the wording a little more easily so there we've got the uh, catalog number ro77 plus another number at, at the end there and uh, built in great britain so it's a little bit dusty i say that does look like it it's been warm or something there at, at some point so the plastic buffer head's just pushed straight in and it clips straight onto the uh, straight onto the chassis. Now the uh, the one screw in the, in the bottom of the chassis, I forgot to point out, I think that holds the cradle for the motor into place. There we go, we've lost one of the, uh, the rods. Let's see if we can get that back in position, turn it over. So I believe that single screw there just holds the, the cradle onto the plastic chassis. So we'll just pop that down. Just have a swift look at the, the old service sheet here. So there we can see the, the cradle that holds the motor. The worm on the motor, the spring clip there, which I believe holds the motor into the whole assembly there. And these parts here, they're the pickups which go onto the, the backs of the wheels and uh, supply the power to the motor from what I can see. Um, I might be wrong. And there's that screw which goes up through the plastic chassis and into that uh, metal cradle there. And there's that interesting wheel arrangement. See, we've got the sort of shell with the inner pushed into it to give the spoke detail. I think it's quite interesting. And I think these little pins that seem to keep working themselves loose just push straight in. I don't think they, they screw in. So maybe a touch of super glue in there to hold them in place, perhaps if they keep becoming a problem. I was quite pleased with this shot here. I didn't notice when I was shooting the, the slight wobble on the camera as it had zoomed in quite quite a long way. And by the time I'd noticed it when I was editing, it, it was too late to go back and reshoot it, sadly. So we're just gonna bring them gently to a stop just by the colored light signals at the end of the passing loop here. So we just jumped back into the catalog for a moment here. We've got to uh, R213 four wheel coaches finished in uh, GWR livery there, chocolate and cream. Let's see if we can get some of that glare off there. Quite impressive looking things there. So uh, I did pick two of those up, as I mentioned earlier, in uh, December at the North Shields Model Railway Club um, exhibition I, I visited. So we'll just pop that to one side. So these are the two that I picked up in December. And this one I already had, but well, what I hadn't realized was that they're slightly different model numbers. So originally the, the GWR livery coach was 213, and this one I'd got was 446. And this is a, a later production run from uh, 87 onwards, from what I read, perhaps been in production as late as 2004. So we'll just pop this down and have a, a swift look at this one again. Now, originally, when we saw those in the catalogue, they had silver seal wheels. So I think this is from a production run from uh, 82 to 83, where it was fitted with uh, white rimmed wheels. So we'll just pop these, or one of these out of the uh, out of the box here, and we'll have a swift look. We'll put a couple of these out of the box, perhaps. So let's see if we can get that out without breaking it too much, or at all. 
So I imagine this method of uh, getting them in the boxes was to prevent people from uh, removing them too easily in the store, perhaps. A sort of a, a safety measure, I think, or just to prevent them falling out in transit, maybe. But I think possibly to prevent people removing them in the store and handling them. So we'll just pop that one out. So I believe the early ones, the color coloring may have been slightly different. Um, I think uh, it may have been yellower rather than creamer, creamy, sorry. So we'll just have a, a swift look around. Plenty of detail. And I think these are the, the same basic mold as the, uh, the blue liveried ones we saw a few months ago. So really smart looking things. And I say this has got the, uh, the old white rimmed wheels. What have we got underneath here? So you made in Great Britain. I've got another catalogue number there, RO16. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which one that, that refers to. And then Hornby Railways. And they did make a, a trap cleaning car using this body as well. So we'll just pop that down and we'll have a look at the slightly later one. And it is a, a slightly different colour variation. So let's see if that one will open that one. So it doesn't need the knife to get it out of the packet. So get that one out again. White rimmed wheels. I imagine that was a sort of a cost thing as those silver seal wheels, wheels sorry, may well have been rather expensive to produce. So I think if we hold these two together, this is slightly lighter in colour if we look at them together. But uh, it was made several years later, I think. Still pretty much the same thing. We're just going to switch points number four there and take the group of models out onto the outside line there and straight under the elevated section. Just listen to the noise they make as they come down the side of the station here, bouncing over all of the diamond crossings and points there quite rattly with those little plastic coaches and plastic wheels. Gaining a little power here now to negotiate the incline. And I think there's a tiniest bit of wheel slip going on there with those very shiny wheels. But I think that's probably it for this week. Again, thanks for watching, it's hugely appreciated. And if you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now. <laughs>